Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video in our series Introduction to the Finite Element Method in which we are going to be covering major parts of the book Daryl and Logan which is basically a first course in the Finite Element Method. Now today we are going to almost finalize the theoretical part of the chapter 10 isoparametric formulation and we're gonna try to understand why a numerical integration is required and what exactly numerical integration is. Now, of course, please notice that this is a part of a multi-part series in the final element method, which I'll be linking on the top right as a playlist. Please check that out before you continue this video in case you're wondering or thinking that there are some parts missing. Anyway, with that being said, and without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So what do we know so far? What we know so far is that we are going to make an isoparametric formulation, meaning that if I have a quad in reality, I can project it back and forth to a natural coordinate system. So our x becomes an s and our y becomes a t. The, the, this natural coordinate system has like this perfect square with ones everywhere. And we're going to use this to try formulate our stiffness matrix. Notice that because we have a projection and back projection, Suddenly, our coordinates are functions of s and t, and our displacements are functions of s and t. This is something we discussed before in previous videos. Check them out if you are lost. Now, our main objective is to find the partial derivative of u with respect to x and with y, also v with respect to x and y, because we want to formulate the strain matrix, which is a step into formulating the surface matrix. Now, unfortunately, u and v are functions of s and t, so I can indirectly find the derivation with x and y by using the chain rule and then solving for that. This has also been covered last time. Now, notice that u actually is not just a function. u is a summation of something called the shape functions or interpolation functions multiplied by the neural displacements. So when I want to derive u partially to x and y, I actually must derive partially to x and y each individual shape function, something that I color coded here. Now this can be further organized into a B matrix, where B is a matrix that converts the displacements into strains and basically sorts those derivatives in their correct order. And this is exactly what we have done last time. In the book, it's been reorganized into this shape, and that's what we will be using in the next video. Finally. We are here now where I have to double integrate this B multiplied by D multiplied by B. B is a, is a matrix which is a function in S and T. And because initially our stiffness matrix is integrated in X and Y, to convert it into S and T, I have to multiply by the Jacobian matrix or the determinant thereof. Fantastic. And this is where the new stuff starts. You see, this is an integration of negative one to one, and you want to know how we can do this. Because look, it's actually a nightmare because j alone is actually also a function of s and t. b is a function of s and t. And you're going to multiply it two times, so you can expect functions are really horrible to integrate by hand. So do we have, an, do, do we have another option for that? Well, the answer is yes. We have another option by using something called numerical integration. And this is the topic of today's video. You see, let's, let's understand this very quickly. Let's say we have, we have a linear function f of x equals half x plus three, just a mathematical function. Plotting the mathematical function is what you see on the right side. And let's say that for some reason, I'm deciding to find the integration from negative one to one for this function. So I'm trying to find the integration for this domain. And we know that we can do this in multiple ways. First of all, we can find this mathematically by doing the actual integration and then substituting with the integration bounds. Of course, this gives you an answer of six. The second option is to do this graphically. And graphically means that, well, the limited integration can be translated into the area under the curve. So you could find the area under this curve, which is basically the area of a trapezoid, the base here being two, and the function value being here, I think, uh, 2.5 or something, and here 3.5. So our trapezoid is, well, base multiplied by average height, which gives you, again, a 6. That's perfect. Now, unfortunately for us, we cannot evaluate this neither graphically because I have a crazy S and T function, nor mathematically because it's going to be a nightmare to do this. So is there a third option? 
Well, yes, we can define or we can find integrations numerically. And this is our topic of today, which is numerical integration. It's an, it's an approximation of the area under the curve. Instead of doing it mathematically or graphically, we are actually evaluating the integral using the function. This might be gibberish at first, so allow me to continue here. Let's understand this real quick. I want to integrate from negative 1 to positive 1 for the function here, uh, which is actually half x plus 3, like half x plus 3. So how can I do that? Well, numerically, the idea here is to say that the integration can be approximated as a summation of the function, meaning that you can approximate the integration by evaluating the function at certain points. This is somehow similar to the Riemann sum, but not quite. You see, you are going to approximate the function's integration by summing up the function values at certain points multiplied by the weights of each certain point. And I'm going to show this in action. Let's say that we want to use two points, like we are now. We want to use, we want to find the integration. I think I messed up my area here. The area is actually larger. Sorry. Let's say you want to evaluate the integration of that entire thing. So how would this look like? Well, in our numerical integration, we would have negative one, positive one function of x. And this equals the h, which is the interval, multiplied by a weight fi. Now, I'm going to put some values from my own mind. The two here is the interval. Since we are integrating from negative one to one, and we are using two points, our interval is two. So you can see the two outside. And now I should use the function value of the first point and the function value of the second point and some weights. So what I did is I said, okay, the weight of the first function evaluation is half. The weight of the second function evaluation is half. So now all I have to do to numerically integrate this is to uh, take the first bound negative one, plug it into the function, get the value f1, which is basically 2.5 here and get the one, plug it into the function, and get the value f2, which is basically uh, 3.5, and then, and then just put it back into the equation. Well, I've just done that, and you can see that, hey, look, it's actually 6. Now, of course, the question is, how did I select the two points here, and how did I select those, um, those weights? As a matter of fact, uh, I'm not the one who selects those things. It's actually already decided. It's called the table for newton coates interval, and it approximates the integration from negative one to one using this. And you can choose two points, three points, four points, and so on. This will give you the weights of the points. You can see half and half here, and everything is perfect. Now, of course, you can take three points, which will give you the Simpsons one third rule, and so on. It's kind of interesting. You should look into that. Another way of finding the numerical integral here is to use the Gauss quadrature. The Gauss quadrature seems to be similar to the Newton codes. It's just a more specialized version, and it works perfectly from negative 1 to 1. Ah, you see? It is one that is actually working very good for negative 1 to 1 integrations. It goes like this. The integration equals weight multiplied by function value. Gone is the h. It's just weight multiplied by function value. It gives you the x's, and it gives you the weights. And notice. Gauss quadrature is specialized for integrations from negative 1 to 1. You know where you saw 1 to 1? Well, you saw 1 to 1 in the isoparametric formulation. One of the reasons, not the only reason, one of the reasons why we are using the isoparametric formulation is because it actually goes from negative 1 to 1 in S and T. This lends itself perfectly into the medical integration. Also, uh, the isoparametric formulation itself is easy to be programmed. If you want to check out the LST element that I tried to explain, you will realize how crazy those equations are. This integration here, because it's a double integration, becomes a double summation. Because, I mean, one integration, look, one integration is one summation. So two integrations are two summations. And that's the final thing that we have. The integration is going to be some weights multiplied by each other and the function evaluation at the four points. The coolest part is that for, for Gauss quadrature, one of the most famous points are this, square root 3, or 1 over square root 3. It's amazing because the weight is 1, meaning that if you use this value, then those become 1, 1, 1, 1, meaning 
that the only thing you have to do to evaluate the integration is just to plug in the function values at negative and positive 1 over square root 3 without any weights because the weight is 1. With that being said, uh, we are going to deal with this next time. I'm just going to quickly show this to you. This is basically what you're going to do to uh, find the stiffness matrix, the local one. It's basically a summation game. So you have to implement S and T. And what are the things that relate to S and T? Well, it's J, it's B, and it's not D, but I will give it a pass because it's uh, Daryl and Logan's book. Because D is not a function of S and T, you can evaluate it outside. And then you just have to sum up. Now, I will not do this today. This is enough information for you. This is kind of a shorter video than the usual ones, but I thought that, hey, I want to finish with the idea of numerical integration. So with that being said, we are basically approaching the grand finale of our series, where we're going to have a marathon of examples to be solved. So thank you very much for being here so far. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, there might be a lot of questions, so feel free to ask in the comment section. I'm actually really uh, active in that. Usually you will get an answer within 24 hours, maximum two days. But, well, feel free to ask anything you want in the comment section. Now, before I finish, I want to give a huge, whopping, Newton Quotes Science shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. Of course, I hope that you enjoyed the video and that you found it beneficial and if you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on especially subscribing as a sacrifice to the YouTube algorithm overlords. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.